Brad Bowman is here with us now. He is the senior director of the Center on Military and Political Power at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Brad, welcome. So Israel has essentially decapitated Hezbollah by taking out the organization's top leaders. What do you think is Israel's end game here? I think Israel's primary objective is to end uh, the attacks uh, on Israel that started on October 8th, the very day after the horrific October 7th attack of Hamas, so that tens of thousands of Israelis can return to their homes. Uh, that's the objective, and that means destroying Hezbollah positions, uh, weapons depots, uh, and tunnels at least south of the Latani River. And uh, hitting uh, those uh, targets from the air is relatively easy for Israel as it enjoys air supremacy, but going in with the ground warfare is going to be tougher and take longer to do. Yeah. Um, Hezbollah, of course, a, a proxy of Iran. Israel has been reluctant, though, to give details to the U.S. about its plans to strike Iran. Why is that, Brad? And, and what do you make of this lack of communication between Netanyahu and Biden? You know, it's, it's interesting. We really see, I would say, somewhat of a dichotomy between the political level communication and communication at the military level. The military to military relations between the Department of Defense and Israel Defense Forces um, and, and, and the relationship more broadly are just incredibly deep, comprehensive and positive. And uh, those communications that go back decades and have been particularly uh, robust in, in recent uh, months, of course, um, there's obviously been some tension between President Biden and, and Netanyahu. Uh, that's to be expected on some level. Uh, some in Israel may be concerned uh, that sharing their plans with the U.S. government, their plans for a response to Iran's second unprecedented, unprecedented direct attack on Israel, might lead to the Biden administration trying to constrain or minimize Israeli actions. But from the perspective of the United States, earlier notice is helpful in that it will allow the U.S. forces to position themselves to help defend Israel and also to protect themselves. Uh, Brad, does it concern you that if, if Israel doesn't give Washington a heads up about a potential Iran strike and what that might mean for, for U.S. troops and, and protecting them? You know, the, the threat to American troops is the Islamic Republic of Iran and its proxy networks that have conducted more than 170 Seven seventy-eight attacks on U.S. forces since October 17th. That's the threat to U.S. forces. I would be seriously surprised if there's not some sort of an uh, advance notice from Israel. Uh, you know, uh, Israel is our, our best ally in the Middle East, and America is Israel's indispensable ally. So I think there will be advance notice. How long in advance and how detailed that is is an open question, um, but I, I'm not particularly concerned about this. And I think some of this is uh, not you all, but the media trying to make more of, of political turmoil in an election year and kind of missing the fact that there is deep and broad communication between the United States and Israeli militaries. Yeah, it goes much deeper than just Netanyahu and Biden, right? right. Um, so Iran warns that if Israel strikes its oil facilities or nuclear sites, it's going to respond by attacking Saudi Arabia, potentially, of course, triggering a regional war. Uh, but Iran's foreign minister met with Saudi, uh, Saudi officials in Riyadh today. Um, What's the goal of this visit, Brad, and is it a sign that it, Iran is trying to prevent further escalation in the region? It's a good question. You know, this is not the first time, of course, that the Islamic Republic of Iran has threatened Saudi Arabia. In fact, Iran has directly attacked uh, targets in Saudi Arabia many times since 1979, including the, Ab the strike on the Abqaiq oil facility that had a significant impact on global oil markets. Um, and, of course, Iran helped arm the Houthis, who for years would launch missiles at uh, Saudi cities and civilians. So this is the not, not the first time we've seen these sorts of Iranian threats, and it's a reminder that the leading threat to regional stability is the Islamic Republic of Iran. But in this meeting, they discussed Lebanon and Gaza, of course, and there's also these warnings about not using military bases in Saudi Arabia against Iran. Um, uh, but we've seen that from uh, Qatar as well. Um, this is a bit par for the course from, from Tehran. Yeah. All right. Brad Bowman with FDD. Always good to get your expertise. Brad, thank you so much. Thank you.